on Senate File 296. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. S President, members of the Senate, just wanted to take a few minutes to just talk a little bit about some of the arguments I heard here tonight against the bill. Um, first of all, the Milliman study. I have that as well. And I want you to know that over the long term, over the seven years that if we're in Medicaid expansion, we actually save $226 million for newly eligibles. The number that was referred to earlier is for those that they call the woodwork effect. They are people who are currently eligible and don't even realize it. And whether or not we expand Medicaid or not, that cost will be there. Nothing to do with Medicaid expansion. There is a savings by expanding Medicaid to the state of Iowa. Debt, you bet we're concerned about the debt. It's the responsible thing to do. But like the state, the federal government needs to set forth some priorities and invest in its people if we are going to get this economy moving forward again. It was mentioned about the lack of funding the federal government has provided over the years to special ed. Near and dear to this woman's heart, been there, done that. But I'll say this, they should have made good on their commitment. Special ed is not an entitlement. Medicaid is. And over the years that Medicaid has been in existence, the federal government has not broken its promise. And then, of course, I could also suggest that the governor's plan, whenever we see the details, you are assuming that he is not going to be seeking federal money for his plan, when in fact he is. 60% of the cost is going to have to come from the federal government. So that $162 million in new money we got to find in this state to support that plan will hopefully pull down $227 million in new federal money. New federal money. So there is a cost to the federal government, regardless if we do the governor's plan or if we do Medicaid expansion. The costs are there. The difference, as pointed out by Senator Gronstall, the Medicaid expansion plan includes those between 101 and 138 percent of the federal poverty level. That's what we're talking about. The governor's plan does not. I can tell you, look at you right in the face and tell you, we offered to do bipartisan work groups with the governor's office and the House and the Senate and both parties, and it was rejected. We agreed to the whole integrated care system and made changes in the com during our committee work to include that in this legislation. And tonight, we offered yet another compromise, and that is the opt-out provision if for any reason the federal government would renege on its commitment. And I believe it passed unanimously. I didn't hear a single no vote. It's part of the legislation before us. Now we can wait longer. The governor did indicate already in July he was not going to expand Medicaid. He said lots of time to work on it. But we're also under what we call funnel deadlines. A week from this Friday, all bills have to be out of one chamber and out of the committee in the opposite chamber, in the other chamber, or that legislation is dead for the year. Unless, of course, we're planning to amend a budget bill. Maybe that's what we're going to be doing before we see the plan. Plenty of time. Plenty of time to present something to the legislature that has some detail. We'll wait to see what it looks like, but I have no doubt in my mind or in my heart that the Medicaid expansion is not only financially smart, it is the morally right thing to do. With that, Mr. President, I move that Senate File 296 as amended be read for the last time and placed on its passage.
The Senator from Dubuque moves Senate File 2-1. 